Welcome. Today we're going to talk about some built-in date functions in Excel. Um, date functions are actually really useful and you can use them throughout your financial models when you're doing forecast P&Ls and uh, balance sheets and cash flow statements or any other forecast which involves monthly periods, annual periods, etc. They're useful because you can make your model dynamic in that you can change the year um, and month uh, start date, etc. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, the first function we're going to talk about is finding the date today. Now Excel has quite a uh, useful uh, function called the today function and it's a really easy one. So all we have to do is write equals today and then open bracket, close brackets, press enter and we'll get today's date which is the 10th of August 2010. So every single time you open up your spreadsheet, this will dynamically update to whatever the date is today. Moving on, we're going to uh, use a function called the date function. Now the date function is pretty useful. If you define the year, month and day, you can create a date in Excel. So you type in date, the first argument is year, which is 2009, then month, which is month 11. November and then the day is the 20th. Close the brackets, press enter and you get the 20th of November 2009. Now the converse of this is to start with the date and then extract the year, month and day. So as you'd expect there's a function called the year function. Select the date, press enter and you get 2010. Similarly there is a month function. So again select the date, press enter and you get month 1 which is January. And lastly there is a day function and you do the same thing. So you can extract the year, month and day from a certain date. The next function we are going to talk about is called the year frac or the year fraction. Basically this allows you to find the number of years between two dates. So we start with year frac. Our start date is date 1, 11th of June 2008. Our end date is 14th of June 2010. And then we've got an argument called basis over here. Now if you press F1 and go into Excel help you see there's different basis numbers. You can work on a uh, 30 over 360 day basis which is basically 30 days in every month and 360 days in the year basically this what that's telling you is that there's the same number of days in each month or you can work on actual days over actual days in the year where for example they'll have 28 days in February and have 365 and a quarter days in a year here we're going to use it, uh, basis number one which is the actual days basis so you'll see that we've got 1.59 years between these two dates. Now if we just change the basis number here to zero, you'll see the number changes slightly, not by much, but there is a change and that's because of that 30 over 360 versus the actual over actual, actual days in a year. The last date function we're going to talk about is the EO month or end of month function. Basically, this lets you define a start date and then change a whole series of dates um, afterwards. So, for example, if you've got cash flows in period one and you want to define what um, the start date of period one is, you can dynamically add up all uh, subsequent periods um, after that start date. So, the first one we're going to do is one month apart dates. So, you type in EA month, you select your start date. We want to go 12 months forward, press enter, and you'll see we go to the, th sorry, we want to go one month forward in this one, so you'll see we go to the 28th of February 2010. So again, you can also see that it takes into account, you know, the number of days in February and the end of the month is actually the 28th of February 2010. If we then copy this across, you'll see that each cell has the EO month function and refers to the period before and increments it by one month. Now the next one we're going to do is do the dates one year apart. 
So we did exactly the same thing with the year month. Select the start date, go 12 months forward, press enter, we go to the 31st of Jan 2011. Sorry. And you'll see now every period goes up by one year. As I said, the useful thing about this, it actually takes into account the number of days in, in a month. So if we change this to the 28th of February 2010, you'll see each month goes to the 28th of February and in leap years it goes to the 29th of February. Similarly, if you choose, for example, um, the 14th of February, the year month, like it says, goes to the end of the month. So you'll see each period goes to the end of that month. So these are the date uh, functions um, available in Excel. There are a few others such as eDate, um, but yeah, press F1 in Excel and search help for the other date functions. Uh, these are the main ones and uh, will be fairly useful in your financial modeling. Thanks for listening. Cheers.